This video is brought to you by DxO. DxO has launched PureRaw 5, their new raw processing engine. And I've been doing side-by-side -side testing with Lightroom, Lightroom Classic, basically Adobe's raw processing engine, and it really blows it away without requiring you to spend any extra time editing. The image quality you get with DxO Pure Raw is like doubling the size of your sensor. Let, let's take a look. First of all, if you are a Lightroom user, it's very easy to have it processed with DxO. Select your picture, file, plug in extras, and then select process instantly with DxO Pure Raw 5. Of course, you have to install the software, so visit this link here to get your trial, and if you decide to buy it, we have a coupon code for you. First, for perspective, this is the image with no edit. So it's a very high contrast image taken with a medium format 100 megapixel camera. At its base ISO, what you're seeing here are my edits applied equally to both to reduce the dynamic range so that you can actually see some detail in it. But let's zoom in and look at the details here. First, in this section of street, for some reason, Adobe has added a whole bunch of red along this railing, and you can see DxO handles this much more naturally. But also, look at the grasses on the shoulder of the road here. You can see in Lightroom, there's just massive amounts of noise. And in DxO, there is no noise. Seeing noise in an image makes you think it's sharper, but it's not, because noise is not detail, it's just adding grain to it. To overcome the illusion of detail that noise provides, actually look at the individual details and see if you can find any detail in the Lightroom processed image that's not in the DxO image, and there's none. The DxO image has the same amount of detail and absolutely no noise in these heavily recovered shadows. Let's look at how it handles transitions. Here we can see first, you see the side of the mountain here, very noisy in the Lightroom version, but also you have these like really hard edges that DxO manages to smooth out much better. Look at these trees on the horizon. For some reason, Adobe adds a whole bunch of like red fringing to them, whereas DxO manages to process it just completely naturally. Now you might ask, what about Adobe's denoise algorithm, which is actually pretty good. It uses AI to reduce the noise in the image further, and, and I have used it quite a bit. So let's compare Pure Raw 5 from DxO to Adobe's denoise. Let's zoom into that same part of the sky. First, the weird fringing still exists, but now you can see denoise adds a bunch of strange texture to it. Let's see if we can see this elsewhere. Oh, if you look at the the railing here, you can see for some reason, Adobe decided to add like a heavy black line along it. That's it's over sharpening. It's trying to add back in detail by guessing where it should be. And it's doing a bad job of it. The DxO version is much better, much more natural. You see that here too. These are the lines of a headlight, but it should not have green and red borders on it. DxO handles this perfectly. Look at these lights in the distance. We see the same thing. Adobe's adding weird black splotches to the lights, whereas DxO handles this perfectly. And on the side of the mountain here, look at all the weird wormy texture that Adobe Denoise adds to the image. And you've seen the side of a mountain before. It doesn't have wormy texture all over it. I think what's happening is Adobe Denoise sees a couple of blobs of noise near each other and tries to connect it together, but you end up with unnatural images. And this is like a landscape photo. It should be reflecting what is actually on the side of the mountain, not wormy textures. This is a fail for Adobe. Here's a picture of a great blue heron. Of course, you never get close enough when you're a wildlife photographer. I'm in a kayak, I'm doing everything I can, but let's, let's zoom in here. The DxO processing has the same amount of detail. There's no detail that I can pick out in the Adobe image that doesn't appear in the DxO image, but the Adobe image shows just a lot of noise. Like look at all the unnecessary noise in the background. The background, it's bokeh, should be a wash of beautiful colors, not a whole bunch of noise. And that's it, ISO 800 on a full frame camera. In the feathers of the heron here, in the shadows, you can see just tons of noise, whereas the DxO image just looks realistic, like more like what your eyes can see. And yet every detail is still there. It's not like just cranking up the noise reduction because that would reduce detail. DxO somehow, somehow eliminates the noise without killing the detail. Again, let's try out Adobe Denoise to see how that does. Now, sure enough, Denoise does a good job of reducing the noise, just about as good as DxO does. But again, we see a bunch of artifacts. Like, look at around the heron's head here. There's just weird stuff. And if we go down to the fish here, what I see, 
Denoise has added just a bunch of texture to the fish's skin. It looks like the fish is wearing a snakeskin outfit <laughs> or something. Adobe, you can't add fake stuff to wildlife photos. Wildlife photos are supposed to represent wildlife as they are. The DxO image, however, looks great. And keep in mind, I'm doing all this within Lightroom. I just round tripped with just a couple of clicks, sent it out to DxO and coming back. So you don't have to give up the software that you're accustomed to using, but you also don't have to put up with Adobe's terrible processing. Let's look at a portrait. Even at this zoom level, I can see the DxO image looks better. It's cleaner, but let's zoom in. Look at all the noise and texture Adobe adds to Chelsea's skin. Like who really wants that? And, and look at the shadows in her dark hair. They're all green and red splotchy in Adobe's default processing, whereas DxO renders them perfectly clean. And DxO gave up no detail on the eye. This is exactly as sharp. Every eyelash is cleanly visible, but all the noise is gone. And as a result, her skin looks smoother and more pleasant. This is a huge win for portraits because no portrait client wants their skin to look more textured because of noise. Again, let's compare it to Adobe's Denoise. It's better. It fixed all that terrible noise that was in the hair, but zooming in on her chin again, we can see Denoise is like connecting the noise dots and adding a bunch of fake texture. And it kind of makes her look like she has hair on her chin. Let's look at a high ISO concert picture. This was taken at ISO 12,800. Once again, DxO did a great job of eliminating the noise. This is ISO 12,800 and it's a full frame camera, but it's a 1DX Mark II, an old DSLR, and it makes it look like a brand new camera. Instead of upgrading the camera, you could just pick up this software at our link here and save yourself a ton of money. I've been using it to go back and reprocess my old pictures because suddenly pictures I took 10, 15 years ago with now outdated gear looks modern, clean, detailed. Great news for Fuji users too. It can process a lot of, of Fuji X-Trans photos. Here's a picture taken with my X-T3. It's very contrasty, but let's peek in the shadows here. And we can see the DxO processed image looks substantially crisper. The texture on his shirt is much more detailed. Let's recover the shadows. Look how Adobe processed this Fuji raw file. Look at this weird peak on the three ball, whereas it's rendered much more naturally by DxO and all this noise in the recovered shadows is just eliminated by DxO without losing any detail. In fact, you get more detail. The X-Trans Fuji processing is still in beta and not all of the newest cameras are supported yet. So be sure to check the website to see exactly what's supported. So how is DxO getting better results with the same pictures than Adobe, a huge company? I went out and visited DxO and they are meticulous. They are passionate photographers. They are taking test pictures with just about every combination of camera and lens that you can imagine. And they have like dedicated their professional lives to figuring out how to get the best image quality possible without like adding in AI nonsense like Adobe does. And the results speak for themselves. You can get a free trial and try it out with your own pictures. Do it side by side so you can see just how much better it is, how much easier this is than buying super expensive gear. And I've been doing this in Lightroom Classic because I know a lot of you are Lightroom lovers. You don't have to give up Lightroom. If you want all the benefits of DxO's awesome processing and you don't want Adobe's subscription fees, check out DxO Photo Lab 8.5, which has the same underlying processing upgrades in an app that gives you all the photo organization and photo editing tools that most of us need. Thanks for sponsoring the CXO and for making software that outdoes Adobe's very expensive software. Try it for yourself at this link and don't forget to use our coupon code to save yourself a few bucks. Oh, in the comments down below, I'd love to hear your experiences with DxO products. Bye.